Thanks again for joining us. Our guest today, you know who he is. It's Mr. Boom himself, Brian Kelleher. He'll be taking on the former UFC bantamweight champion, Henan Barrow, one week from today in Orlando, Florida at UFC on Fox 28. What's going on, Boom? Good morning, sir. How you doing, man? What's up, man? Good morning. I'm doing good. How's everything? Doing well, man. I see uh, you got a new poster up. Looks like you kind of rearranged your room a little bit differently. It looks good, man. Looking good. Yeah, thanks. Man. Yeah, I put the poster up for my debut uh, from the Brazil fight. So I got I got Maxi Baby up there and, and uh, Jose. And uh, it's pretty cool. You know, it just brings back memories. Absolutely. That's awesome, man. So like I said, one week out, how was the, how was the camp? Great, man. Uh, I feel amazing. I, I did all the extra work this camp, you know, uh, the extra runs, the extra swims, everything. I just really uh, pushed myself, you know, never never sell yourself short. So uh, I feel so ready to do this. I'm just excited to fight. Perfect. When do you head to Orlando? Uh, I leave Tuesday morning at like 10 a.m. I get there Tuesday afternoon. Okay. We talked uh, after Dansk, but a lot has happened since then. Obviously, you... Uh, when we're on the MMA hour and stuff, how was that? You, I know that was a big deal for you. Yeah, man, I, I've been a fan of that show for years and years. It's just crazy watching everything that you manifest kind of unfold, you know. So it's like just sitting across from Ariel, it's just it, like it felt weird at first. Like I'm like, what the hell's going on? You know, like this is crazy. But like, it was nice. You know, it was good to get my story out there and and talk with them, get a little bit of exposure, and uh, just to see things, you know, happening the way that I imagined. Is it was amazing. Yeah, that was awesome. You got to pump your CBD stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the 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 Turp House, the CBDs, and uh, and of course my supplement sponsor is Supplement Kings New York. I think uh, Ariel gave you a little bit of too much of a hard time about not uh, or still living at home though, right? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, man. Like I, I like I'm still living here, but you know I'm saving my money. I'm being smart with my money. I've been looking at houses like it, it gets addicting. I've been on there like just looking at all different houses around and. And I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do condo or a house, but I definitely am uh, stacking up the bonuses and I plan to keep that going. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty close to, to making a move here, so I'm excited. Well, I mean, you did just get a car too, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I got the car. You know, I was driving a Hyundai Sonata for a while and like now I got the Subaru WRX. It's a little bit different, a little faster, you know. And uh, it's like the first like nice car that I've had. But uh, the plan for me is to... Uh, trade this in in 2019 2020 for the new bronco that's coming out those things nice. look sick yeah, yeah yeah i like those too that's funny you drove a hyundai sonata too i drove one of those i used to call it the sinatra yeah. Oh, yeah. What, <laughs> what year was yours uh mine was uh 2016 i believe the last oh, okay one had. yeah it's yours actually, was nice though yours was new yeah it was nice it was a nice car a smooth yeah. car you know i really liked it but you know like definitely a step down from the subaru but it's funny like my brother he uh he he stopped working so he wanted to do uber so i gave him my lease and that, that's what led me to buy the new car ah got you so he was doing uber in that one yeah he's doing uber in the sonata so it worked got out you. he just took over the lease payments and then i just got my new car boom perfect boom <laughs> <laughs> yeah i always say that now especially because of you ever since we talk i find myself doing that all the time <laughs> boom that's that's the key man you gotta get that word out there you know? <laughs> So uh, speaking of the or the MMA hour with Ariel, the cool thing I thought that you told him was uh, that story about your debut on getting on the plane and not wanting to get on the plane, actually. Uh, what yeah. made you finally decide to, to share that story with everybody? Because we had talked after that and you hadn't mentioned anything about it. Yeah, you know, it was like it was something that I kept in for a while. But I, you know, going on that show, I knew it was a, a lot of viewers. And I was like, you know what, now's the time. It I took some time to you know, just kind of think about whether I should tell it or not. I wasn't sure because, you know, the first flight that I didn't get on, I was, I was kind of, I was worried about, you know, certain people judging it, you know, like mm. not like, like my manager didn't really know the exact situation because, you know, you don't want to tell people that because they don't understand necessarily. Like, what do you mean? You, you, you're you not, you're not coming, you know, like what's going on. And this was my dream that, you know, something like, you know, anxiety, or whatever was about to ruin. And it was just crazy how I had got off the plane. You know, my mom and my girlfriend had dropped me off at the airport with, with my dad and my brother. And, um, oh no, with, with my brother, actually, part of the story I didn't tell was because I forgot was that my dad was already in Brazil 
because his flight was before mine. So I had my dad on the phone, like panicking, you know, like, what do you mean you're not coming? Like what, you know, he was crying. Like he was really upset. You know, he thought I, I just left him there and, and I, and I, you know, I couldn't come. And he was like, you know, just really upset about it. And, uh, that was actually like the thing that made me realize like, man, if I don't go, you know, and do this, like, and I leave my dad there, like, that's just like so messed up, you know? And I didn't even realize like, my dreams were going to fail. I was like, my dad's there, you know, like that's horrible. Like I let him go to Brazil and now he's just by himself, you know, like waiting for me and, and I'm not going to show up because of being, you know, having anxiety. So, you know, I thought about that. I reflected over overnight about that. I talked to him and I just kind of like, I just prayed, you know, and I was just like, listen, I, I this is my dream. Like I got to do this. And that second plane I got on and I still felt a little uneasy, but then the John Morgan thing happened, you know, I was, literally trying to get off and, and my brother was with me and he was like no like this is your dream like what the fuck are you doing like come on and I was like I don't know man I'm feeling this 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 feeling again and I can't, I can't control it and like we tried to switch our seats and there was John Morgan you know and I just like ever since then I've had this special connection with him because you know he didn't realize that he did that for me but he distracted my mind and I started striking up a conversation with him and I got excited about the fight, you know, and I was like, you know what, this is it. Like, I, I got to do this. And I stayed. That's amazing. Yeah. Were you concerned at all with what the other fighters on the roster might think uh, of your mindset by sharing that story with everybody? You know, no, that, that wasn't even a thought because I know as far as my mindset, when I get in the cage, I, I, I believe in myself a hundred percent, you know, it, mm. it, 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 it was completely disconnected from who I was fighting you know, like the fact that I was fighting, I don't know if there was some subconscious feelings about, you know, traveling overseas and never having done that before and that it was like a weird thing for me. But I believe I belonged there. I, this was my dream all along. You know, this is all I want. I, I don't do anything but fight and, and, and I want to be world champ. So I was like, I don't know why I'm feeling this, you know, but uh, I didn't care about what other people think. You know, it's just this is the truth to my story. And I figured it should be told, you know. Wow. Wow. So did you uh, did you toil with telling that story or did you was that something you wanted to tell everybody? No, I, I, you know, I, I did for a little while, but I wanted to get it out because, you know, this is the real story of my life. You know, this is this is the real story of my debut and what happened. And I think it's, uh, I, you know, I pride myself on being honest with, with, with what happens and uh, I wanted to get it out there. And, and I thought it was a good story because, you know, I built like a, an interesting relationship with yeah. John Morgan and. And, you know, you, you just never know, like he said, you know, just being nice to people and just do it, you know, it, it could change someone's life, you know, like that little thing right there literally changed my life because I could have ruined my, my whole, you know, my dreams and everything. So it was, it was, it was, it was a cool experience. And I even told like how, when I got in the cage and he was the first person I saw out of this whole Brazil crowd going crazy, it was weird how just I spotted him. Mm. and it just lit up like this feeling in me like you know what this is meant to be like i belong here like i'm gonna win this fight man like it, it was like a weird little uh an omen for me you know wow wow that is amazing so after dance you talked about wanting to get a top 15 ranked opponent i mean almost even better you get the get a former champion in hen and brow how does it feel to get an opportunity like this Oh, it's amazing. I, I'm so excited. I, I feel like, you know, as if this is a guy I was watching for a while, you know, coming up and being this killer that was unbeaten for quite some time. And uh, and, and and now here I am, you know, and it's just like, whoa, like what, what happened? Like all this happened so fast. But uh, this is what I want. You know, like this is former world champ. I got to go in there and finish this guy and prove that, you know, I could do to him what a lot of others couldn't have done to him that were at the top, you know, that are world champs. So I'm just excited to take his name, you know, and, and make my name uh, out of this fight. And uh, it's uh, I couldn't ask for a better opportunity. Like when that when my manager called me, I was like, yes, like this is this is it. Like, this is amazing. You know, like this is the guy to fight right now. I could tell the UFC likes me giving me this opportunity. Uh, they know I'm a guy that's willing to step up on short notice. Like I was trying to get that Jimmy Rivera fight. So I think the company likes me. I'm a company guy and, uh, and this is, uh, this is the next step. So I can't wait. Absolutely. With a big win over Burrell, I mean, he's obviously at a pivotal point in his career. So with a big win over him, where does that put you in the division? Do you think? 
Yeah, you know, it's an it's a weird thing because he's like he's not really ranked, I don't think, because he was bouncing around one forty five, one thirty five. Now he's back down. Um, I think he's like number ten. I think that's where they kind of put him just to put him somewhere. But I mean, the bottom line is he's the former world champ, so mm. I feel like beating him means that I beat the former world champ, and and finishing him within three rounds means I did something that many other top level fighters couldn't do. So that's my mindset. That's my goal. And I think it puts me in line to fight the top 10 guys. And uh, of course I have a plan, you know, and, and, and you have to, in, in this game, you have to ask for things to get them. So I have a plan and, and what I, my vision is clear. And, uh, you know, that's what I want, fight the top 10 guys, get myself into the top 10, top five this year and, and, and get in title contention. Hmm. Mm. So do you see yourself in the title contention within a year? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, I see myself, you know, finishing this fight, beating this this former world champ, and then uh, and then you know, calling out someone in the within the five to ten range, and uh, and that will put me in title contention right there. I was going to ask you with a big win. Do you have any any plans or idea who you'd like to kind of call out, or are you kind of keeping that close to the chest until the fight? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to keep that close. You know, I, I don't want to jinx anything. You know, I yeah, don't want right. to you know, talk too soon. But, of course, like, I have a vision. I have a plan. And, uh, you know, but I'm so focused on, on this fight. I'm so focused on, on Burrell because, you know, I, I know he's had some downfalls, but we all have in this game. And I'm not taking him lightly. I don't think he's, he's, he's getting worse. I just think, you know, he had some slips. And he's probably looking at it like a chance to rebound against someone who's not you know, well ranked like me or, or well known for that matter. But, uh, you know, I'm motivated more than ever to, to fight this guy. And I have to keep my focus 100% on him before anything else. You said, obviously, you're big on visualization. How do you see this fight going? Yeah, you know, uh, with the float tank thing, I've been doing that, you know, and uh, when I go in there, I make it a point to really like watch myself fight, you know, uh, it's something that makes it a little bit more comfortable. But when I get in there, it's almost like I've already done it a bunch of times. So, uh, yeah, I, I do a lot of visualization. I just see myself involved in everything that can happen in the fight. You know, scrambling, getting tired, getting hit, but but being the ultimately being the guy that keeps the pressure, that has more will, that's, that's going to break this guy. You know, I, I know he tends to fade in later rounds, and I think I tend to grow. You know, as the fight goes on, I get stronger. So uh, I think that's going to be the the telltale of the fight. You know, I think I'm going to get stronger as the fight goes on and be able to get that finish later on. Mm. So are you a guy that tries to visualize your entire career? Um, I wouldn't say I would say I take it in, in increments like I visualize the next step, you know, and uh, I don't try to get too far ahead to the future because anything could happen you know you just never know but as each fight happens i visualize that that scenario you know and uh it's crazy because it like it haunts me i feel like like at night i'm like trying to go to sleep but the visualizations are happening and it creates a little bit of a heart rate you know you're like you're in there like you're feeling mm. it like it's happening you know so that happens a lot i'm just like all right calm down you know what i mean just relax like get, all right you, you did enough of this like just you know go to sleep now but yeah i'm constantly visualizing like what's gonna happen and, and what i want to do in there for my next fight so i guess sometimes you'll be trying to lay down to go to bed and you're visualizing yourself walking into an octagon or something like that huh yeah man and yeah. it's like it's hard to fall asleep you know lately it's been a little tough because like i know the fight's close and, you know, I just, uh, I, I'm a thinker, you know, like I, I think sometimes I overthink, but, you know, overthinking can be a, a detriment to, to some people. So I try to just stay positive about it, but I can't help myself from visualizing and, and feeling the moment. And, uh, you know, sometimes that just, uh, it, it, it brings an intensity to you that it's hard to go to sleep, you know, so it's like, I try to tune it out sometimes with the float tanks like i said sometimes my purpose when i go in there is not to visualize and to just clear my mind completely mm -hmm. so i use it for different things you know and uh it works you know like sometimes i go in there i just blank out and for someone who thinks a lot like me it's really beneficial when i get out of there it's like oh i just completely detached from everything for an hour you know and it feels good so it comes both ways you know i visualize and then i try to just be cold and just blank out sometimes that's a cool way to get a sense of clarity. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what do you think you'll try and do after fighting when your career in fighting is over? What are some of your interests outside of fighting? 
Yeah, you know, like I was saying, uh, I, I really want to try to do something with uh, being an analyst, you know, breaking down the fights. Everything in the sport interests me because I live the sport. You know, I watch everyone's interviews from from the lower guys to the to the Ariel Hawanis. I, I, I love watching interviews. I, I, I would like to do, you know, what you're doing, asking fighters questions, managing fighters, uh, starting a fight team of my own, a gym where I have a facility that has things that other gyms don't have, you know, uh, cryotherapy, uh, a massage area, a hot yoga area, like, you know, something unique that's different. But, um, you know, I, I wouldn't mind trying to commentate and, 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 and call fights like that. So uh, there's a lot, you know, start a podcast. There's just so much in this in this sport that you could do, and uh, I'm interested in all of it. So I, I'd like to touch on, on as much as I can. I've seen you do a couple of boom breakdowns, I think you call them. Uh, I feel like that's good practice, too, for stuff like that. Are you going to continue to do those? Yeah, you know, I've gotten it like it's hard. I get a little lazy with it, you know, when I'm focused on training and mm. the fight gets closer, I kind of like fade away from doing other things. I mean, I like I put my 100% focus into the fight and the training and uh and it kind of takes away from like my motivation to do other things. So uh a lot of this stuff I feel will come more towards the end of fighting, which I don't know when that is, but it's probably a good idea for me to start doing them as I fight, you know, so that by the time I'm, I'm done fighting, they're built, you know. Right. And uh, so, yeah, like the boom breakdowns, I want to, you know, do more of those, but also maybe get like a podcast, like the boom cat, like, you know, boom podcast or whatever it is and have people come on and, and break down fights, people who are passionate about fighting. And, uh, you know, yeah, I would, I would love to keep doing that. That would be amazing. That'd be amazing. Well, Brian, I'm sure you got a busy Saturday, man. So I appreciate you stopping by this morning, giving us a little bit of your time before uh, you get to it. Before I let you go, I know I always see you on Instagram kind of jamming and getting it. So I know you're a, a big guy into music. Uh, what have you been jamming to for motivation on the way to practice? Uh, you know what, man? I don't know what it is about Meek Mill, but the guy just gets me fired up. Like his, his music is like, it's like real gangster type talk, but like, I don't know. It just gets me like ready to kill, like ready to fight. You know, so when I'm running on the treadmill, I got Meek Mill going. Uh, uh, Wins and losses, his album, uh, um, the the past albums. Um, yeah, I've been listening to him a lot. But I'm like I'm, I'm like a all over the place music guy. Like on the way to the gym, I got XM going, and it's like chill radio, you know. And it's like just dreamy, relaxing stuff because I need to relax my mind sometimes. But once I'm going. I'm like, I'm in there to kill. I got Meek Mill going hard in the, in the gym, so. Boom, boom. I'll have to check some of that out, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. All right, man. Okay, everyone, be sure to tune in next Saturday, February 24th. Brian Boom Kelleher. He's taking on the former champion in Hen and Barrow at UFC on Fox 28. They're the featured bout on the prelims. Don't miss it. Boom. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.